So you might have heard the phrase that art imitates life. And what this simply means is that art is sometimes a result of the things that are happening in the world. So in other words, an artist might make a commentary of something that they have observed in the real world. But what if I say to you that there are two different types of artists? And that there are artists who are inspired by life and artists who inspire life and inspire change. In fact, I would argue that in some ways, the artists who inspire life, the artists who inspire culture, in many ways are more meaningful to us as individuals. But let's talk about culture first and let's try and understand what culture really means to you and to me. So if you've been to any country or if you've moved to a different state or a different house, a different city, you'd understand that the people in different places have different cultures, different practices, different principles. That whatever culture they are part of, that they identify with that culture. And how you and I, as an artist, interact with the culture also affects how we interact with those people. So if I, as an artist, show up into a certain culture and I behave or I talk about things or I sing about things that are against that culture, then I'm going to rub against the grain of that culture. This could make me very popular. This could make me go viral, but it also cause me to have a lot of conflict. And if I, as an artist, speak to that culture in a way that actually inspires that culture or builds it up in a way, then I would actually be supported by that culture. This is where you and I as artists need to find our own cultural family, right? Our own cultural identity. And that sometimes you as an artist might struggle in a realm, in an area of performing or, or building an audience because you haven't necessarily identified your culture. And here's the thing. Your culture doesn't have to be a geographical place. Your culture doesn't have to be a physical place that you have to go to, although ideally this would be the easiest way to find the culture. But your culture can be an online space. Your culture can be a space where people gather, people meet together and actually say the same things, we believe the same things, we talk about the same things, and people will share the same values. So that is one of the key ways that you as an artist can actually figure out who your audience is and how to get to that audience is by understanding the culture that you're at. So you can either do one of two things here. You can be the artist that is inspired by culture, or you can be the artist that inspires culture. Now here's the thing, to be an artist that inspires culture is incredibly difficult. In fact, I'll name a few artists who have inspired culture and changed culture in a very drastic way, and we'll talk about that in the later part of this video. But let's talk firstly about artists who are inspired by the culture. I think you can look around and see certain artists who come around in a certain time frame, in a certain genre, a certain period of time, where when they are making music, that the music that they make is very much in line with the times of that culture. So in other words, this artist comes around, and maybe for this whole decade, they are making the music that is in line, that speaks the same truth that this culture believes. And because of that, they become very popular because, hey, that's what the culture requires. And that's what that audience is actually requiring from that artist. And that's what they're getting from that artist. So you have a lot of artists. And I think most artists fall into this category where they look around and they go, well, what sound is, is hype now? What sound is sounding really good right now? What sound is very popular at the moment? And then they go out and either find a producer, find a songwriter, or find singers that can replicate that sound, or they learn how to do that themselves, right? Now, obviously, if you do it this way, you have a high likelihood of being successful because you're essentially doing a copy and paste method, right? You can simply take music that's being made right now, copying and pasting it and going, I'm going to create something that sounds similar to what's currently being produced, and you can produce that same outcome because you know exactly what's required, right? So in many ways, this is a much more savvy way of getting to produce your music because you're waiting on that people already like it. So in many ways in business, entrepreneurs also talk about looking at the market and seeing what the market needs. That before you build a product, you should actually look at the market and go, well, the market is currently buying this. So if I create something that looks like this, then I'll get into the same market and I'll be able to compete in that market. Although this is great and although you can actually become very successful doing this, the downside to doing this is that Whenever a culture changes or whenever the culture shifts to a different outcome, a different sound, different production style, a different way of songwriting or a different way of performing, that you now also have to evolve with that culture. So you've known artists who have performed music, made music for a specific genre in a specific time period. And then after that culture has moved on, as time does, as technology advances, that they cease to have relevance because now they have to change themselves completely. And again, if you're thinking about transforming your life and changing your culture, then I'm going to ask you to tune in and subscribe to my other channel where I'm going to talk more about how to transition from a different culture into becoming a different culture for a different outcome. But if we're sticking to culture specific today, some of these artists who are culturally relevant at one stage in their life might find themselves being irrelevant at another stage in life because they failed to progress with the culture of the time, right? Now, there are some artists who do this very well. They will actually be able to listen to the new genre, the new culture, the new sound and go, you know what, this has changed. It used to be like this. Now it sounds like this. 
I need to work with someone who's different and therefore I can actually stay in touch with the times. Now, Asha is a very good example of that. And if you listen to his first albums, you can hear how his music changed from, you know, 8701 to the Confessions album, you know, to the newest material. And he's continuing on that trend and on that legacy, adapting so that he can stay relevant in the time. So if you're the kind of artist who listens to the music or listens to the culture around them and then is influenced by the culture, then you need to follow this blueprint and go, okay, I'm going to look at what's being made right now. This is a surefire way of becoming successful. And if I do this, if I replicate the same quality because I'm listening and I'm comparing, and I know that people will like this exact same thing, then you can replicate that and you can continue to adapt. But be warned, just because one thing has worked in one era, in one genre for a specific time, doesn't mean that you can just do a carbon copy of that thing every single time. It takes a lot of skill. It also takes a lot of talent to be able to adapt your style to suit the new culture and the new era. So that's for the artists who are essentially inspired by the culture. But let's talk about a different kind of artist. Let's talk about an artist that inspires the culture. Now, when I talk about artists that inspires the culture, you're talking about artists that essentially transcend a genre, transcend an era, and whose music continues to thrive well beyond the years that they are gone. People like Bob Marley, people like Elvis Presley, people like Tupac, for example. These are artists who, when you listen to their music, no matter if it's 20 or 30 years old, you can listen to the message and go, wow, I'm actually hearing the message that they said 20 years ago is still relevant even today. And you can listen to the Bob Marley song and see people singing that song in a stadium full of people in Russia somewhere. And you're thinking, wow, these people are singing a song that was made 40 to 50 years ago. And it's just amazing. Now, what these artists are able to do, they're able to take what is authentic and what is original about them and to create something that is everlasting in a sense, that is eternal in a sense, right? You can listen to classical music that was made hundreds of years ago by the likes of Mozart and Beethoven, and you can play that today and go, wow, this was actually quite inspired. This was actually something that was coming from a deeper place, not just something that someone copied. Now, the, the great thing about these kind of artists is that oftentimes they make music that's everlasting. They make music that's, that, that'll be known for the years and for, for time and memoriam after they've long gone. But the challenging thing about being these kind of artists is that sometimes they are misunderstood in their time. And that many times, actually, when artists like this, artists like the great Van Gogh, who created art that was so different at the time that people didn't really understand, they didn't appreciate it because they were used to all these finely painted pictures. And that when he created this art, that people didn't fully appreciate it until he, he actually died. Now, if you want to figure out a way to balance out your own creativity, your own inspiration, your own authenticity, balancing out with the relevancy of today, but actually creating something that's authentic that will live on beyond you, then you can look at the things that sound current and then look at the way that you can make it sound authentic, right? So when I listen to artists like, you know, Bob Dylan, for example, and you listen to his music, you listen to his message, you listen to the instruments that he uses in his songs, and you can think to yourself, well, I can clearly hear that this is a song that was made maybe in the 70s or the 80s, but then the song lyrics, the, the style of singing maybe, might be something that's completely different. Again, you listen to Anina Simone, where you listen to music that was made by Anina Simone, you can say, I can hear by the style that this is a little bit older, it's maybe 60s and 70s. But when I'm listening to the lyrical content of this, this is so unique. The style of singing is so unique that even people today are still copying and trying to sing Nina Simone songs because they just sound so authentic. And that's the, the trick that you have to kind of figure out there. If you're an artist that you feel like your content, your your thought processes, your, your style is so different, but you still want to be heard, then you should think more about blending the current sound with your own authentic style. And that is the thing that you can actually become known for long after you're gone. Now, here's the thing. It's not easy to do this because you, one, have to be extremely talented and you also have to know other talented people that you can continue to work with that will create the sound that might just be current today, but throughout the ages as well. It's all about making music that's not dated, that doesn't sound old, but music that sound like it can be played in any genre, in any era, in any decade. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is a quick little video talking about culture, how culture influences us as artists and how we as artists influence culture and how you can maintain relevance as an artist to not only do what is good for the genre, do what is applicable now, but do something that can be long lasting, authentic, but also appealing in the now and forevermore. So if you enjoyed that, I hope you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Share with an artist that you know, a musician and an artist and a creative that you know who is maybe struggling with this idea of authenticity, figuring out, do I just focus on authenticity and neglect like sounding current? Do I neglect commercialism while actually being authentic? What, what do I do? Do I just become commercial and, and neglect my own authenticity? Maybe I should do a bit of both. So 
if you are an artist, then I encourage you, try and blend these two things. Blend the, the now, the current things, and blend the authenticity that you have that nobody can copy from you because you are just you, you are unique, and nobody can pretend to be you. So that is your superpower. I want you to use that, remember that, and continue to build that, hone that skill so that you can become even more talented that people who will look 10 years from now will say, you know what, this person was really talented. And it's not about being deluded about it. It's not about saying people just don't appreciate me because I'm so ahead of my time. I do believe that at some level, even if your music is something that is authentic and that is new, that culturally challenges the norm, that people will still look at it and go, or listen to it and go, this is still quite good. I'm, I'm hearing this. You might not have 100 million fans, but you might have 10,000 or 1,000 fans that go, you know what, I really like this. This music is really good. And that's what you need to listen to. It's not about making necessarily uh, a million people seeing your name, but it's about having that core group of audience, the core group of fans who says, we love your music, we believe in your music, and we want to hear more of it so give us more of that because we need more authentic artists like you so i hope you like this i hope you love this video please do like share and subscribe this is one of the first video in the series of five where i'm going to talk about how to transform and transition yourself from your cultural identity of what you knew yourself to be into being someone who has a different outcome and succeeding in your own way on your own path as an artist right so again if you like this do like share and subscribe this lets us know that what we're doing and what we're showing to you guys here is appreciated and that's making a real difference in your lives as artists and musicians now i want to talk to musicians artists singers and songwriters because hey that's what we do right the seventh century music it's it's what we've built right we built a platform that is built around shifting the culture changing the culture because we know that the culture that exists right now around music and the music industry is, is not great for artists. It's, in fact, it sucks for artists. Most artists, right, just won't make a living wage making any sort of money or making their music, right? So we believe that in order for us to build the outcome, to get the outcome that we want, it's not enough for us to just kind of say, well, we just change our beliefs because it doesn't help to just change your beliefs. It's not enough to just say we just change our mindset, right? Because mindset alone won't make the change. It's not enough to just change your habits, right? We understood that we have to change everything. We have to change the culture that actually creates this industry because a lot of artists that I see online and, and everywhere I go always say to me, you know what, I'm releasing my music now and because CDs don't sell, that's not the culture anymore. Remember, culture can shift. The culture used to be CDs and, and T-shirts and tapes and posters and things like that. It's now moving to a digital age where everything's online, it's streaming, it's AI, and everything's going in this trajectory. So we built a platform that's going to hopefully change this culture for the better, change the culture for the artists, so we can help you to distribute digitally, market digitally, and monetize your music in the best way possible using a digital platform. So while stream platforms are great for the consumer and the consumer gets a lot of benefit from that, they get to listen to your music at a very, very low cost, a fraction of the price, you don't get the benefit of that. On our platform, you get the benefit of actually knowing who your fans are by name, by country, and by email, being able to contact them. And then once you're able to do that, you can bring them into your world, right? So why this is very important for you to do. It's very important because you must understand that we're in this age, right? We're in this culture now where your data is the most valuable thing. And the data that you have, whether you're a business person or an individual, is one of the most valuable assets that you can possibly have. And we give you that data because we believe that you've earned it, right? So because you've earned it, we give you access to that data. But we don't stop there. We also give you the training, the tools to actually teach you what to do with that data when you get it, right? So this includes things like being organized, like how does it actually work? That when you get an email or when you get emails or contacts from a hundred people, maybe even a thousand people, that you don't start to panic about what do I do with those contacts? We have a place for you that you can actually learn how you handle these contacts using some of the software that we have actually built ourselves and the software that we've used from some of our partners to actually help you manage that audience. And then you can actually change the culture within your own audience, within your own listeners to help them understand that by doing things this way, that they're shifting the culture in a very meaningful way. And by doing so, that you'll be able to distribute your music, market your music, and monetize your music very, very effectively and efficiently, right? So we believe this is the best way for artists to go. If you want to know more about that, then sign up at 7thCentury.co.uk. Go over there, sign up for the Learning Hub, and then sign up into the platform as well. We'll begin to walk you through the platform, and you can also get to meet us in our private group where we'll begin to talk to you more. You can ask us more questions, meet the team, meet myself, 
and we can have more open and honest conversations about how we can change the culture, how we can shift the culture that's currently around us. And we can't do it without your help and we can't do it without your fans' help. So if that's you, if that's you, you're an artist, a singer, a songwriter, a producer, and you want to be a part of changing and shifting this culture, then I advise you to sign up at 7thCentury.co.uk. I'd love to meet you guys. I'd love to hear your music. And I look forward to helping you on your journey to become a successful and thriving artist. And hopefully together, we'll be able to change and shift this culture to create a much better one. Now. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you loved it, if you liked it, then do like, share, subscribe, share with someone you think would benefit from it. I look forward to seeing you next week, the next video, when we speak more about changing your belief system. All right. So take care. Love you as always. Bye.